This week's Knitting SOS video is correcting mistakes from a previous row by laddering down just the stitches affected by the mistake. As always, if you'd like to jump directly to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. Laddering down refers to dropping only a few live stitches off the needle and then releasing the yarn row by row until you are down to the row where the mistake occurred. It's called laddering down because the strands of yarn that are released resemble the rungs of a ladder. You then recapture the live stitches onto a double pointed needle if you have just a few stitches or a circular needle if you have a lot of stitches and then you re-knit the stitches correctly row by row using the rungs of the ladder until you are back up to the current row. I consider laddering down to fix mistakes to be the most important technique in my knitting repertoire. I only have to deal with the stitches where the error occurred and I can leave the other stitches that were perfectly knit untouched. In fact, uh, years ago when I first learned to ladder down, about a few months later, my husband remarked, you know what, you seem to be swearing a lot less when you knit than you used to. And it's true. Today I will demonstrate how to ladder down stitches somewhere in the center of the work. Let's get started. So here you can see I have a swatch that I've started. It has a garter stitch border. Now there's an error here in the border. And then I, in the center of the stockinette section, I have a little seed stitch pattern that I've started. My intention was for it to be centered exactly in, but it's shifted off to one stitch to the right. I started it a stitch early, and then once I had established this first stitch, every row after that I worked in relation to that stitch, so the whole thing ended up getting shifted and now I can say, oh, I've got three stockinette stitches here and five here. This all should be shifted over one stitch. So the mistake is from here to actually here because this stockinette stitch should have been that purl stitch. So these are the stitches that I need to ladder down. So what I do is I start the new row working across as I'm supposed to work until I get to the first stitch that needs to be laddered down. For the sake, I'm going to take all of these stitches off. So I have two, four, six, eight stitches I'm going to take off the needles. Two, four. So these are all come have come off the needle and now I'm going to release them. Now I need to take them down down to where this purl stitch is. Sometimes it isn't always clear as you're ripping these things out where you're supposed to stop. So one thing that you can do is just put a locking stitch marker in the row below like this so that you know that, that by the time you get here you can stop. Now you can always go further than you intended to but there's no reason if you don't need to. I'm just going to pull on the running thread between the stitches, so I release that long strand of yarn. So that's one row. I've released two rows, three rows, and you can see here's that, that purl stitch. I've now taken it out, and you can see that I've come down to where the locking stitch marker is. So now what I need to do is recapture these live stitches. I'm going to remove this marker first. What you, what you want to do is use a needle that's much smaller or at least a couple sizes smaller than the, than the needles you're using for your project. So you can even use a really small needle. So I'm going to get them back on the needle any way I can. I don't worry about if they're sitting on the needle correctly. I just want to get them on the needle. Okay, so I have them on the needle and let's see if I've got them out. Two, four, six, eight. I've got all eight stitches. Some of them are sitting on the needle correctly. Some of them are not. For standard knitting, you want the right leg of the stitch. Every stitch has a right and left leg and you want the right stitch or right leg hanging over the front of the needle. Another way to think of it is the leading leg. The leg of the stitch that's closest to the needle tip should be over the front of the needle. So you can see that I have some of these 
are not seated on the needle correctly. So I can go through and fix that. I'm using double pointed needles so it's easy to fix from either end. So I'm going to fix these. This one is also incorrect. And it looks like the rest of these are all right. And this is a good way to make sure that you don't have any split stitches either. Sometimes when you're recapturing, you end up going through a couple of the strands and not all of them. So now I have them all back on the needle. Now what you have is these long strands hanging down in the back. And you're going to use these to re-knit the stitches in the correct way off of the double pointed needles. Now you always want to use the strand that's lowest in this group. Sometimes when you have a lot of strands and they're very long and they're hanging down, you can miss which one is the lowest. So what I do is when I have first laddered down, I turn the work over, make sure I have all of, all of the strands here, and then I can use a locking stitch marker to grab all of the strands except the lowest one, the one that I'm going to use right away. Now, if you have a lot of strands, you can do them in groups of 10. If you had to rip back several repeats of a pattern, you can group them by uh, strands that are associated with the, the repeat, whatever works. But for me, it work, works really well to make sure that I have all of the ones I'm not using um, grouped together using a marker. So now I need to knit across here. Now let's, let's look at what my stitch pattern is supposed to be. So here I have a stitch pattern and this purl stitch is supposed to be on stitch number eight. This represents all of the stockinette portion. It doesn't represent the border stitches. So I should have seven stockinette stitches and then my purl stitch. Well, right here, I still have three stockinette stitches. I've already have three stockinette, so I need to do four stockinette and then my purl. Now, if you're used to holding the yarn in your right hand, you may be able to do that for a couple of stitches, but because the yarn is connected to the left, it's going to be difficult to do that. So it's helpful to learn how to uh, do a continental stitch. So again, you want to take another smaller needle and you're going to go through and knit these. So you come through the front just like you would always. You can hold the yarn in your, pinch it in your fingers if you want. You can put it over your finger. You're coming around like this so that the yarn is going to be coming over the top of the needle. And then you can pull it through. Now I often use my index finger to pull to anchor it when I pull it through, but you're just pulling a loop of yarn through. So you stick it through and then you're going to grab, the needle comes like this to grab the stitch. So even if you don't knit continental normally, it's helpful to understand how it works. So I needed four of these stitches. So I've got two, three, four, and now I need to do a purl. So the purl, for purling, the yarn always has to be in the front just as it would normally. You're going to come in just as, as you would always to purl. And this yarn has to come from the front. It has to come, I can grab it, over the top of the needle like this. And you probably have to pull it down to anchor it there in order to pull it back through. So now we have our purl stitch and now we have to move the yarn to the back again and we have to knit these three last stitches. Now the reason we're working with uh, smaller needles is because as you start running out of yarn here, it be can become difficult to work the stitches. So I'm on a small needle, so that gives me more slack because the stitches are smaller and I can adjust the tension of the stitches either now or later. So I have a little bit extra slack here. I can just kind of pull it out along all of these stitches. And you can do this later on as well. So I'm going to unclip this and I'm going to look for the lowest, the lowest strand and that's this one. And I'm going to clip the other two together. So I don't have to work, uh, turn the work and work on the wrong side of the work if I know how the stitches are supposed to look on the right side. 
You can turn it around and work on the wrong side, but you don't have to. So now I have less slack. So what you can do for a knit stitch at the end, when you have that final strand there, you can lift it up like a yarn over or make one, like you're just lifting up that running thread. And then you can take the stitch that's on this double point and pull it over and off the needle. So now you've completed that stitch. You now need to move it to this needle. But that is one way when the, when the yarn gets a little tight at that end, you can do lift it onto the needle like a yarn over. Okay, so again, we can lift it on like this. I'm moving it so that it's to the left of the strand like that. So now I can come through here, and in this case, I'm just gonna swoop down over it to pull it through here. And it's going to be sitting on the needle in the wrong orientation. So then I can reseat it so that it's correct. That one is a little tight. So I have all of these back on the needle. So now I can finish working across uh, the row using the working yarn and the pattern that I'm supposed to. I don't have to move these stitches onto that needle. I can just knit off of this needle, put it to the side, and then finish knitting across. So now it's all better. Now there's a little bit of difference in gauge here, which washing and blocking will help, but you can also adjust um, the gauge of stitches by manually um, pulling on the legs of the stitches. Now, there are no absolute limits to the number of stitches or the number of rows that you can ladder down, but there may be some practical limits. I wouldn't hesitate to drop down five or 10 stitches for 40 or 50 rows if there were a fairly decent number of stitches on the needle. If there's only 20 or 30 stitches on the needle, I would more likely just rip the whole thing back. I once laddered down 12 rows of the center panel of an afghan. Now the afghan had 250 stitches and the center panel had 120 stitches. I laddered down all 120 stitches for 12 rows. Now nothing was incorrectly knit in those 12 rows. The problem was I had left out six entire rows of the center panel. Look for my next video, how to ladder down stitches along the edge that include the selvage in a few days. Once it's posted, you can find it linked right here. For all my other videos on fixing mistakes, there's a playlist right here. If you have any comments or questions about today's video, you can leave those down in the comments below, or you can join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks, and there's a link down in the description box below. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.